Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another show. Let's dive straight in today. Um, if you have been following us this week, we have told you about how to build a tribe, why you need one, how it fits into the larger baton marketing system. So there's a few steps before, but we're going to do a bit of an intro on that in a moment. And we've shared with you why a tribe is important, where to host them, how to show up in the tribe, leadership styles, the three core elements that make up the description of a great tribe based on Seth Godin's description, which is one of the best out there, which is in relation to business. So we're not talking about, in this case, a social tribe, a community, uh, something that forms and turns into a large, large tribe for social causes at this time. We're talking about how do we use a tribe? How do we benefit from a tribe? How do we nurture? How do we create one for the purpose of business to then make sales and to then align the sales with the right people? That's kind of the the ethos, the principles that we've been talking about this week. And remember, tribe sits in the baton marketing system. So that's where we are. And today is the day where we're going to be sharing with you how do we actually get people into the tribe. So we know if you joined us on the last yesterday, last episode show is we are we created a Facebook group. Now the Facebook group we're using for a whole bunch of reasons, which we've explained. And if you fall inside that category, which about 95% of people do, you will be pushing ahead with building a Facebook group. A few percentile fall outside that and you may be a LinkedIn group or somewhere else. Now, if you do fall outside the Facebook group, come and chat to myself and Kyle on Slack. We can help make sense of where your tribe should actually be hosted. It could genuinely be somewhere like LinkedIn. But for the assumption of this, based on yesterday, we've now created a Facebook group. We set up the rules. We set up the the management of it. We've got the name. We've got the URL. We've got a picture. So it looks really inviting. Now is the next big thing. We want to open up the door and tell people our tribe is now open. This exclusive place is now open. So that's where we are today. And we're going to be, going to be sharing with you how to do that with some really cool, sophisticated tools, which most people are aware of in the sense that it's happening to them, but they don't actually know what is happening to them. So we're going to talk about that today and give and equip you with the skill set and the how to in order to do that for yourself and your own business. So that's enough teasing. That's what we're covering today. Kyle, where should what we're assuming that the listeners have in place to implement what we're sharing with them today? Because it's this this is not just uh, you can do this from day one. Based on the baton marketing system, they should have done something prior. So what is that? Absolutely. So remember, the baton framework is a sequence. Uh, we initially have business. We then move on to audience, then tribe, then offer the network. So we're now in the tribe section. But to get people into our tribe, we first need to have an audience. We need to have laid down that foundational work building up our audience. Now, we have spent a whole week just on the idea of audience and going through the basics. We spent several weeks on different ways um, for you to build up your audience as well. So there are multiple weeks, multiple hours of um, content that we've already put out about audience. However, we thought it's worthwhile just kind of uh, highlighting and reminding you about what it is we discussed then so that we know how we can take people from audience over to tribe. Um, if you did not listen or watch any of those, I definitely recommend going back and looking at audience. Tribe will make a lot more sense um, based on your knowledge of the audience uh, material. But then we are going to cover the basics of audience now so that you can at least um, you know, finish up this session, finish up this week, and then hopefully go back to audience after. So mm. we create an audience by creating value for a market, um, by creating value for a group of people who exist out there in the world. That is our market. We build value by focusing on the problems and the questions that our market has. And we use content marketing as the main tool, uh, the main tool of answering questions, providing solutions for this market, providing them value through this content, um, teaching them, educating them, giving them advice, uh, bringing them closer to our level of knowledge about the subject. That's how we provide value to an audience. And that's how we build an audience. Um, that's the fundamental underlying process that we are carrying out in audience, in the audience section of the Baton framework. And the tool 
uh, the method we talked about for doing this was video. And we talked in great detail about why video is so, it's like just a much better format. Um, and in particular, we talked about putting video on Facebook and live video. Um, that's a bit too much detail, but why video? It was because it was, it's really fast to produce compared to writing blog articles. It's cheap because of that, because you can produce so much content so, so, so quickly. It's the most immediate. Um, people are seeing you. They're seeing you talk. They get the, they're the, it's the closest they can get to you without actually being face to face. Um, it's great for building up a personal brand, kind of for the same reason, because of that immediacy. People can see every part of you, even your flaws, even the uh, things that you think that are uh, that, that you don't want to put out there. For some people, that'd be like, yeah, no, that's great. That's authentic. You're a real person doing a real thing, uh, which is very important for your personal brand. And finally, video is the best format for the algorithms on Facebook, on Google, on Instagram, whatever platform you are on. Video is always going to be favored over static images and over text because it's more engaging to the, uh, the users of that platform. So we went through during our audience week, so many reasons why you'd want to use video. Mm -hmm. um, and in audience, we decided that video was going to be the uh, method that we use to get our content out to people in order to answer their problems, in order to provide them value. And that's how we build an audience up. Exactly. So now the two things you should be taking away from this introduction is Hams and Kyle are assuming two things. Number one, is you have been doing exactly that. You're producing video, um, you've been, been producing educational, great educational content and building an audience alongside this. So the moment you watch that audience week, you should have started to build an audience alongside this. If you had done that, well done, because it would have led you to this week, which allows us to access this second principle. So, so there's two assumptions here. One is you are have done the content, you're building an audience, and what that allows us to do is the second assumption, which is you're building that audience on Facebook. Now, why is that important? And just note here, if you're doing it another platform, no problem. Just come and tell us in the Slack group. So looping back to this now, you are producing content on Facebook. So there's the two assumptions. And that's what we recommended in the audience week to get you started with getting your message out there to the world, to your specific niche audience. Now, based on those two assumptions, this allows us to access an incredible tool. And this tool is what we're going to be using um, principally. There's lots of different ways. I'm going to share a few other ways with you principally to get people from your audience into your tribe, from your audience into your tribe. That's the focus of today. And this tool is called remarketing. Now it's incredibly powerful and we are going to be describing that today, but that's going to be in the second half of the show. And then we'll talk about that, the benefits. Uh, we've got a few links to help you out, to get you started. So before we move on to that, Let's handle the things like we always do in the BBO show, which is to share with you things that you can access immediately. They have a very low learning curve, very low technical ability required. So let's dive into those first. And the way we want to think about that is how do we access low hanging fruit? And the way we access low hanging fruit is this main sort of subject that we're talking about, which is going to cover the rest of the show, which is giving our audience a call to action. So bear in mind, they've got lots of value and content for us already. We want to give our audience a call to action. And there's many different ways to do that. Call to action. One of the advanced ways is remarketing. That's at the top. But what can we do before we get to remarketing? And whilst we're learning that technique and implementing it, testing it, what things can we do? So the first thing we can do is capture the low hanging fruit. So handy that my visual diagram the low hanging fruit is here. The low hanging fruit is very much based on the objective of firstly, just getting, just, just asking your audience. Is it as simple as that, Kyle? I mean, that's, that's my assumption when, when, if we're moving people into a tribe, we're just simply asking the audience and say, Hey, we've got this group here. Uh, there's going to be this, this, this value in it. It's this, this, this exclusivity in it. Come and join it. That's the principle, right? Absolutely. And you see this on, for example, YouTube. Um, if you're watching a video on YouTube, often at the end of the video, 
um, the person in the video will give you some call to actions. They'll normally be like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. But if they have some kind of group, if they have some kind of website they want you to go to, that will also be mentioned. That's a call to action. We're just going to be doing the same thing in our videos, which we're already putting out to our audience. Um, we are going to say, hey, by the way, I have this group um, and these are the reasons why you should join it. So that's incredibly simple, um, but it's something that people forget to do sometimes. Mm. And and you can do that one within your videos. That's a that's a great one. You can do it at the start of your videos, end of your videos, whatever structure you want. But mm. you can also, if you've got a blog, you can post it on your blog. If you've got if you do social media posts regularly, you can put it in your social media post. Start to include it. And bear in mind your audience have been watching you for a while now. So it's okay to start to include this. Um, you can have this in two forms. One is a direct address, which is you're just asking them, saying, Hey, I've got a I got this group, I've got this. You don't have to call it a tribe, but you can call it a group. Uh, and then you're going to experience this, this, and this in it. And we're going to talk about this later in the show. Or you can include it regularly, which we suggest you do both. Include it regularly in your videos, in your article, and so on and so forth. So that's one way to do it. Just simply asking. Asking on a regular, consistent basis. No, and don't be offended. So a good point here is don't be offended when people who regularly watch your content don't act on it immediately. That's nothing to do with you. And that's nothing to do with them. It's just a case of sometimes people need nudging about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before they're like, oh, this group is still here. This group is real. Um, let me act on it. So don't be offended if they're not triggering on the first one, which is why we recommend including it in most of your videos going forward until you start to see some traction off the back of that. So what's some other quick wins Kyle, that's one quick win. What's another one? Sure. So again, our objective is to get people from our audience into our tribe and to start to get the tribe up and running. So there are some other quick things we can do um, before we move on to our main me mechanism. Uh, definitely tell people who are in your industry, friends, colleagues, um, people who are interested in this topic that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, tell them that you have a group. Tell them why they should be interested in joining it. Later, we're going to have people from the public. Obviously, that's where we want to build our business. But if you know people who are already interested in these subjects, invite them in. It's going to be useful for them. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a nice, easy one. You can go that's a, let's think of that as the first circle. These are your immediate contacts. You could also kind of go out to a slightly wider circle of contacts you have in your email, what do we call it, address book, that's it, um, which might include people that you've worked with, like past and present clients, for example. Your philofax. Yeah, yeah. So people you might not have touched base with in a while, but they have an interest in this particular subject and you think um, they would like to join the group. Also worth reaching out to them, because remember, this group is free. It's not like you're trying to sell people anything at this point. You are just saying, hey, I have a group that I'm setting up. I think it might be useful for you if you want to join. Here's the link. So nice and simple there. Uh, a third thing you can do is a bit more cheeky. <laughs> you can go and announce your um, your group in other groups. So you would go onto LinkedIn or you go onto Facebook and you'd find other groups that have a similar uh, user base, a uh, user base that has a similar interest uh, or interests as you, I would say make sure there's an overlap in interests. Not, I'm not telling you to go <laughs> into your competitors' groups and say, hey, <laughs> leave this place, come and join my group. Instead, there needs to be an overlap in interests. So we used the example of Barefoot Running yesterday. You might go into a wider running group um, or a marathon running group and say, hey, um, I've got a barefoot running group that I've set up. If anyone's interested in barefoot running, learning a bit more, talk to people who are interested in barefoot running, then um, this is where the group is totally free um, and it's a good place to come and hang out. Make sure you ask whoever runs that group, whether this is on Facebook or LinkedIn, or maybe it's a physical group in the real world. Um, remember that this is their tribe. This is a group that they have built up. So for you to go in there and try to steal their tribe members is not cool. Um, yeah. If anything, um, talk to the organizer and say, hey, I have this overlapping group. Um, I think it's good for a subset of people who are in your group. Um, do you want to cooperate in some way to kind of try and send tribe members back and forward? Um, I mean, there are ways to navigate this. Don't just go and steal people. Uh, absolutely. And that's 
the approach is to ask to be sensible and there's a lot of what's a positive with all the groups is there's a lot of groups out there which are open and they they know people promote things but they do it in a way which says provide some value i.e share comment provide some valuable posts and then every so often you can promote every so often you can introduce something sometimes they have threads so promotional threads as well so what we're saying here just like your facebook group that we set up yesterday has groups uh, has rules and regulations associated with it to keep it safe and manageable for your new tribe coming in other groups have exactly the same thing they're just well more they're just more established mm -hmm. so use it as a learning experience but certainly use the groups respectfully now that's that's some good uh, quick wins to get started off um that's that's definitely the way to go so we've shared with you just simply asking including in your videos we've shared with you tell other people in your industry friends and co colleagues have you got email contacts? Have you got a file of facts? Have you got like me, a drawer full of business cards? Uh, can you just chuck them in an Excel spreadsheet and just send them a blast message? Are you in WhatsApp groups? So we've got so many WhatsApp groups, if they're business or industry orientated, if you're in a WhatsApp group, just say, Hey guys, respectfully, this is what's going on. I've got a, I've got a cool group. I'm going to be doing this, this, and this in it. WhatsApp groups is one. And then finally, jumping into other people's Facebook groups, maybe they're small, medium, established, and playing within their rules to also promote your group. So that's it. Now let's move on to the exciting thing. The main topic, which is what we wanted to share with you in order to get a sophisticated way, a powerful tool to leverage in order to get people from your audience into your tribe. Now that is called remarketing. Now, remarketing, as we mentioned, is one of the most powerful tools out there at the disposal of a business owner, a marketing department, a digital marketing team, whatever it is. It's a very powerful tool. And what's interesting about this tool is most people don't know about it. Most people, um, like I said, it happens to them as a consumer. They can see it happening to them, but they just think that's the way the internet works. Mm -hmm. and they don't know the mechanics or the theory or the principle behind that. And what's even worse, pulling it back to us, building businesses online and, and teaching people is most businesses don't use it, but it's crazy powerful. It's almost essential um, for anybody doing any digital marketing to include this in their toolkit, in their tool belt. This should be one of the primary tools. Think of this as a power drill if we're talking about tools. So Carl, if you, if you explain what remarketing is as an an example i will and i've started doing it i've i will start drawing up a diagram first of what remarketing is and then we'll add another layer to this which is custom audiences sure absolutely if you listen to this pretend like you haven't heard that word yet we'll share that with you in a moment sure so i think that's a really useful way to frame this most people know about remarketing kind of tangentially in the back of their head because it happens to you all of the time have you ever been to Amazon, uh, looked at a lamp, for example, and then been followed around the internet by this, this damn lamp, which is appearing on every website, it's appearing in adverts, it's appearing, you know, in your Facebook feed, all of a sudden, this is remarketing. Have you ever been to a yoga blog, um, looking up, I don't know, a series of yoga moves, and then every single YouTube advert you receive for the next two weeks is about yoga? That's remarketing. Have you ever downloaded a free trial of some software and then been bombarded with adverts for that same app um, as you start to reach the end of your trial run, trying to get you to buy? That is remarketing. Again, this is all remarketing. So without getting massively technical, you can be tracked and traced all around the internet. I think people know this part already. We just don't really think about what's going on. Um, generally, you will be identified by your email address. Uh, you can also be identified by your computer's IP address. That is basically the, it's a string of numbers which identifies where you and your device, be that a telephone or a computer, is connected to the rest of the internet. That's called your IP address. Um, or maybe little snippets of code are put into your browser um, and you might know these as cookies. You you will know these as cookies because now every website you go on as a massive, hey, we we, we track your information. Uh, which is so annoying. Which, yeah. And <laughs> which they've been doing all this time. It's just now because of data protection laws, you need to tell people. So now anytime you go to a website, it's like, <laughs> you get these massive pop-ups. <laughs> 
and they're and super annoying on mobile because you know you want to you want to read this article yeah, yeah. and it's like oh, look i know like i know yeah. i live in the 21st century i know you're going to advertise to me i know that your business runs i mean think of it from a business perspective they're producing free content articles videos and you're not paying for it as a user how are they going to make money they're going to make money via advertising mechanisms sharing that traffic with advertisers so that they can advertise to you so that their business can keep on running otherwise it's not going to operate that's how newspapers work that's you know? like, uh, yeah but you sound like a digital marketer here i mean we'll yes. talk about this so i'm, I'm defending them i'm defending the, the, these people all of a sudden yeah yes. it's an interesting i mean this is an interesting topic about data privacy and uh privacy as we go around the internet but so whatever the mechanism is these remarketing tools whether it's a cookie whether it's using your ip address or your email address it allows marketers to deliver targeted messages to potential customers wherever they are online i can find you on facebook and then send you adverts on youtube i can flag you up on a blog and then send you instagram adverts there all of these different services talk to one another which is why it seems sometimes like you've been followed around by a particular product or mm, a person. So, so so carl's giving you an example there let me let me put up a diagram and uh, just walk you through a typical, and remember, we're just focusing on remarketing here in the simplest form to get the concept over to you. So here is, okay, let's call, let's call this harm, Harminder. Okay, so Harminder, I don't know why I'm talking about myself here, because this probably happens to me all the time. So I go to a website. Now, in this example, Kyle said Amazon. Cool. So I go to amazon.com um, or .co.uk in the UK. So I go here. And You're looking at baby stuff because that's all you buy now. Exactly, and every single day there's a baby item coming to the post. So I see, you know, I click on I don't know a baby rocker. Okay, so I look at the baby rocker, but I am so reluctant to buy baby stuff, and I leave the site. I am just like, nah. I exit the site without making a purchase, and I'm done. I'm back in my life, but telling my wife that yeah, I looked at the baby rocker. Maybe I'll order it next week. Um, and hoping she doesn't want to order it. So that's that. So that's the that's the brick wall there. I'm done. I'm not buying the baby worker. But I showed an interest in this, right? So what do they do? They put together these ads, baby worker, baby worker. Maybe you like this baby worker. Maybe you like this baby worker. And they come from Amazon or depending on what website you are, they may come from other companies. And they will now, via a remarketing method, show me these adverts regardless of what platform I'm on. It could be Facebook, it could be what's known as display ads, it could be uh, via Google ad. It very much depends how they want to track and what they're doing, but that's beyond the scope of this. Just understand the principle here. Went to a web website, didn't make a purchase, I exited, but I showed intent. I showed intent that I was interested in this and they know that. Then they will send me ads just to remind me about this thing that I looked at. And the advantage of this is Let's assume that, you know, maybe it costs money to get me there or I went there organically for free. Now, for them to make that sale, if they continue to remind me of it, at some point they're going to make that sale. So it becomes a lot cheaper and it drives down the cost of advertising because they're advertising to somebody who's already showed an interest in a particular product. Now, think of that as a business owner. How powerful is that? Um, another way to think about this as a as a completely different example from digital marketing and it often plays out in workplaces you're, you're two single people in the workplace in the office and both people have no desire of um, finding a partner at work that's annoying I don't want my boyfriend girlfriend to be at work but you have the same conversation with this person just call it um, John and Sarah John and Sarah are constantly having this conversation at the water cooler this is the water cooler but they haven't asked each other on a date yet, okay? One of them's interested. So now John's interested in Sarah and he keeps turning up at the water cooler. What is that principle in what we're talking about? That's remarketing. John keeps turning up at the water cooler to hang out with Sarah and he's been there so often. He's in her psyche now. He's in her awareness. He's still being nice. Now maybe there's a date and that's where somebody goes back or they click the ad and they make the purchase or they go on the date or something like that. So I want to give you an abstract example because um, something that's not digital marketing related because then it may say, actually, this is not just a marketing principle. This is a human principle. The idea of 
constantly staying in somebody's awareness mm. means somebody's about to make a decision. So that's remarketing. And I think, Carl, that's enough at this level um, to share with you. Pretty much. Uh, I want to throw in an abstract example there. As yes, well. this, I like this. This is fascinating because um, so familiarity leads to um, likability which is a very weird concept. Even if you are exposed to something you don't particularly like, if you get exposed to it enough times, you become used to it and then kind of warm up to it and then maybe even like start to love it and enjoy it. This happens with foods. If there's food that you don't like, but you kind of fight through it, you will eventually start to enjoy it. It also is the reason why um, when we think of our favorite music, our favorite music style tends to be set when we were teenagers. And that's the music we go back to because when we were teenagers, we listened to the same songs again and again and again and again, yeah. which we do not tend to do as adult, adults so much. But there will be some songs, I don't know, Linkin Park or whatever, which we would have listened to on repeat hundreds of times as a teenager. And that has wormed its way in. It's like, this is what a good song sounds like. Um, and it's the same thing here with remarketing. It's using multiple touch points to talk to that same person again and again and again and again until they're like, all right, fine, I'm buying this baby rocker. So this mm. can be annoying. Um, and so if you did accidentally look at something on Amazon and then you're followed around by that item for the next three weeks, you're, it can be very annoying. You're like, oh, why is this following me around? But on the flip side, so I was talking to my girlfriend about this um, and I was explaining remarketing. She's like, oh, yeah, that's that's great. Because it means instead of me receiving random adverts about, I don't know, horse grooming, or something I'm not interested in, I am receiving um, adverts about yoga, or I'm receiving adverts about flowers and gardening. You start to receive adverts about um, things that you're actually interested in, because I think a lot of people accept now you're going to get adverts anyway, so they might as well be relevant rather than entirely random. And that's a really great point, because think about our lack of um, focused or lack let me try to rephrase another way back in the day TV, tv tv so back in the day we look at a commercial there'll be a three minute slot which we had no choice but to look at and that three minute slot will be marketing to the masses now i wasn't interested in at the age of 15 16 i wasn't interested in detergent because i was watching whatever my mum's watching <laughs> detergent uh, i don't i can't even i just whatever this stuff they're advertising saga holidays for newly retirees yeah like that, that, kind of, that kind of <laughs> stuff now that's just general, nothing to do with me. So thank goodness the internet's come along and it's evolved. And now it's sending me things that I'm interested in. I'm a purchaser, I'm a consumer. I have a choice in it, whether I want to buy something or not. Um, some people are quite compulsive, but that being said, you just have to say, cool, I'm getting adverts that I want to see. That's a great improvement from what it used to be. So I agree, we're going to get adverts anyway. This is also one last thing. This is why we remarketing is probably the most powerful tool a digital marketer has, because the traditional form would be a TV advert or sticking an advert on the side of a bus or a billboard where you have no control over who's going to see it. Yeah, you have rough probabilities like, oh, okay, at 6 p.m., this these types of people are watching it but you can't stop a seven-year-old harms also watching the you know detergent advert and not being interested in it whereas with remarketing and with digital marketing in particular we actually can get to that level of granularity so we're saying okay i'm going to show the advert to you 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 not you not you 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 not you not you um we can send exactly what we want to send our message to the exact right people and this is really when you strip it down this is what distinguishes digital marketing from uh, standard marketing or traditional physical world marketing, which mm, is why absolutely. We, we are talking about remarketing a lot, but this is, this is it. This is the big one for digital marketing. Absolutely. So now let's take this principle and inject some steroids into it. Let's take this to another level and share with you what we taught you in the audience week, and the assumption is you've done it, you've done it on Facebook, we can we can do this incredibly powerfully. And what the way we can do that is we don't even need somebody to visit our website. We can bypass that mechanism or be complementary slash supplement that mechanism to better reach our audience, better get our audience to move into the tribe. So Carl, if you start introducing this next phase, I will draw a diagram which is parallel to this mm -hmm. to show how it serves this purpose. 
Sure. So we're going to be talking to you now about a specific form of remarketing, and it's called Facebook Custom Audiences. Now, remember, we talked about using Facebook back in the audience section. We didn't go into a massive amount of detail why you had to be using Facebook, but this is um, probably the main reason is that we have access to something called a Facebook customer audience. Uh, so hopefully you did um, set up all your audience stuff on Facebook. Um, if you did not and you're using another platform like YouTube or maybe you're using a blog, um, you can still do remarketing. It's just the tools for doing remarketing are less user friendly and less accessible than the Facebook custom audience. Um, so in that case, if you have been building your audience elsewhere, definitely come to Slack. We can put, point you in the right direction of how you get into remarketing using those platforms. But on Facebook, you have access to the custom audience. And this is probably the easiest way to get into remarketing. Every time you posted a video onto Facebook, onto your Facebook page, and people watched that video, they were added automatically without you having to do anything to a Facebook custom audience. Mm. So here we go. Okay. I'm not overly happy with the diagram, must be said, but um trying to work out how to do these lines okay so remember that first layer there in this diagram is remarketing standard way somebody hits a video but what we've done here is think of this now as the custom audience building element now i came and watched your video remember that's me in this diagram on facebook i came on facebook so let me add that that's a really good point so i visit facebook so I haven't come to anybody's website. I visit Facebook. Now on Facebook, I watch your video. I watch another video. I watch another video. Now under these videos, I've put X seconds. Now that could be, I watched your video for three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 24 seconds, whatever. Now, when I watch this video, I get added to your custom audience within a specific category. And I'll let Carl explain that in a moment. But the simple principle is, now what we can do, we can now remarket an advert. So it now joins the same line here and we can choose what the ad is. And we'll, we'll talk to you about what that ad is in a moment. It now remarkets back to me. So I watch your video on Facebook and you can send me an advert based on that video through this mechanism called custom audience. Extremely powerful. Now, Carl, how can we, how can we determine wh which person to send what ad to? I think that's sure. I think before we jump to that, which I'll get yeah. to, is it's not obvious, but this is incredibly powerful because getting somebody to your website costs money. Um, to do that in in bulk, you're going to have to be spending advertising revenue to get people to your website, or doing Google SEO, which again takes time and money. Um, so to send a thousand people to your website, for example, might cost you, I'm going to use a number, a uh, hundred pounds. So it's going to be 10 pence per person to get to your website. Getting people to watch a Facebook video, on the other hand, much cheaper because they are not leaving Facebook. They're just scrolling through Facebook and they stop on your video. They watch it for a bit. Boom. They are added to your custom audience. They do not need to jump through the hoop of going to your website in order to be tracked. Um, so this seems like a small tweak but this is uh, phenomenal in terms of how quickly we can build an audience. It might only cost you a penny or 0 0.01 penny, uh, 0 0.001 pound, yeah, uh, a tenth of a penny to get somebody to watch a video instead of it costing 10p to get somebody to your website. The thing about this is if you are spending budget, it means you can build a custom audience of 50,000, 100,000 people for f a fraction of the cost than if you were trying to get people to your website. Yeah, really good point. And before you answer the question I asked, now this first thing we're talking about is, okay, we've spoken about remarketing, then we're talking about creating a custom audience, mm -hmm. this part here. Now we have put a link in the description below because there's going to be some technical elements to this, but we found that Facebook themselves give you a really great step-by-step -step guide rather than go for a tutorial on this site. Let's get the principles over to you. The link is in the description below and it's got a title called custom audience. So go check that out to answer the question. Now, one of the typical questions we get, and this is important and it's, and it's a fair point. You do not need to set up your custom audience 
first. So this is why in the audience week, we never really spoke about it because it's not really necessary at the moment. The custom audience can be created well after you start to produce these videos. Because what Facebook does, and it's really generous in this respect, it allows us to back date. It's already storing all that data for us. It allows us to back date that custom audience information. And that's powerful. So don't worry about if you haven't done it yet, don't panic, don't think, oh my God, I've lost all of these people who watch my video. I can't send them an advert. Actually you can because Facebook is already storing that data for you. You just have to create it. You have to set it up. How to do that is in the link in the description below. So hopefully you've been following along the BBO show and you've just focused on one thing at a time. First, and now hopefully you trust us in the sense that we'll, we will reveal the right tools that you need at the right time. Most people who, who get excited about digital marketing are setting this up thinking, yeah, I've got a custom audience. Now what? It's the videos and the content and getting people to watch it is a primary element here. Mm -hmm. Then we worry about custom audience. Okay, so that's that done. Yeah, it's a good point. If we had introduced this concept back in the audience week, it's too much. It's overwhelming. Um, so you do have to trust us sometimes that we're we're moving these more advanced topics further down the line, uh, but setting you up in the early stages so that you'll be ready uh, for it. So as Harminda says, if you've been putting out videos and your videos are receiving a thousand views, 2000 views, however many views, uh, especially if you've been boosting it, then all of those people who have been watching your videos are automatically being added into this bucket, this list, um, this custom audience, which we can then use for remarketing. Mm, absolutely. So now let's very briefly talk about the final principle of this is remarketing to your custom audience. So how do we make this link to then send Harminda in this diagrams example, a advert or a message specifically against that custom audience. So that's the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle to close the, the loop on this diagram and get back to me when it comes to this diagram. So once we, so what we're saying here is once we have a custom audience, what do we do with it? That's the key. So Carl, what do we do once we have a custom audience? Sure. So again, think about who's in this audience. These are people who have watched your content video. Um, they know who you are. They presumably like what you're talking about um, because they have been watching your videos. Um, so we want to start to deliver messages to them. Now, Harms drew on the diagram a couple of different videos. Um, the important thing here is we can filter uh, our custom audience, depending on how much of our videos they watch, how much they like us, we're, we're, we're using this as a shorthand. So uh, as soon as anybody on Facebook watches any one of our videos for three seconds, they are in our custom audience. But arguably, that's not particularly engaged. Um, imagine somebody who's watched one of our videos for three seconds compared to somebody who's watched an hour long video of ours. The person who's watched it for an hour is probably much more likely to uh, want to purchase from us later down the line or join our tribe in the most immediate step. Um, we have the ability to filter in Facebook though, which is really, really, really powerful. Um, somebody who's watched 80% of a video is going to be much more likely, much more familiar with us than somebody who watched three or five seconds. Yeah. So what we're doing here, we're, we're, we're well, Facebook is using this assumption to correlate uh, the time somebody watched a video to how in advertising terms, how how much more warmer are they in regards to receiving an advert and making a purchase? Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, remember the purchase is getting somebody from our audience into this tribe. So we're not focusing on the transactional element here. Although this system can be used for that, now I'm taking us a sidetrack, the system can be used for that. The focus for now is getting people from our audience to the tribe. That's the key. And that's based on what we've been talking about period over this time. And Carl, so that's very much around the baton system. You know, we've been talking about the baton system, audience tribe fit into that. And the whole thing is about building trust, likability, and warming people up as we, as they go through this linear baton system. Now the custom audience and using that mechanism properly is such a great indicator on, based on this assumption that Facebook has set up, is some people are warmer than others, which allows us some really useful information. 
Mm -hmm. So what we're basically going to be doing to the, this warmer audience, this custom audience, is we are going to be sending them a direct call saying, hey, come join the tribe. So it's taken us a long time to get to that point, but that is what we're going to be doing with this custom audience. We're going to send out a message to these people who already know, like, and trust us more than the random general public on Facebook. That's the point here. Um, they're already warmed up. We're going to send them a message saying, hey, I have this group. Um, come and join my tribe. These are why you'd want to do this. Um, and just a note on that before we move on, Carl. Mm. Remember, Facebook has 2.5 billion users or whatever. So... For somebody to watch your video and enter your custom audience, that's powerful. What you've done is you've segmented a tiny, 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 tiny percentage off that 2.5 billion user base that Facebook has, and you can talk directly to them. Yep. That's very powerful. That's that's almost arguably almost equivalent to inviting people into a room for an hour and a half and having a conversation with them and talking to them. That's that's a kind of equivalent in the real life scenario is taking the national population, maybe taking a hundred people from that population and talking to them directly. That's the principle here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they are going to be more likely to join our tribe than a random cold lead. Um, so that is the purpose. That's the objective of today. Remember is to get people from our audience into our tribe. And the way we're going to do this is through remarketing specifically through Facebook custom audiences. And that's what we've been covering. Um, there is going to be this question of, well, does this cost money? Is this free? Uh, how much does this cost? This is a very natural question for business owners. I mean, it's something we need to address, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg said, yeah, it's, all, it's free. It's completely free to advertise, use this platform for free. Yeah, come uh, stay in my guest bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And he said, once you've advertised for free and you've made loads of money, you can go visit him in his in his uh, $100 million house and whatnot and he said cool and he'll, he'll even cook you dinner and uh, unfortunately it doesn't work like that facebook is a tool facebook is a free tool for users and their customer is fundamentally business owners or advertisers or advertising media agencies who spend money on facebook via advertising we are no longer facebook's users at this point we are facebook customers the average average person out there the 2.5 billion uh, users they are not paying to use Facebook. Uh, they are the users, but now as business owners, we are the customers. It's a very different dynamic. So yeah, this will cost money um, because it's a form of promotion. We are running a business and we need to segment a portion of our budget um, towards marketing, towards promotion. What I will say though, however, is remarketing um, and especially custom audiences is extremely cost effective compared to marketing to a cold audience. We just gave the example of a TV ad. Uh, so watching a TV commercial break and there is a, a detergent advert being shown to seven year old Harminda. He doesn't care, but the people paying to place that advert have still paid to place that advert and it is not doing what it needs to do. With remarketing, because it's so direct, we get a very, very um, good cost efficiencies as well. Mm. And just to uh, put another spin on that, and emphasize what Carl's saying is, think of direct, this is the opposite to direct advertising. Direct advertising is sending, even online, an advert to a complete stranger. They don't know you, they probably haven't seen your face, your brand, your logo before. Direct ad. That's gonna be expensive to convert somebody. Okay, so that's, that's principle number one. So that's one way to advertise. Whether it's to get somebody into a tribe, get somebody to sign a petition, get somebody to join a social cause, or get them to buy your product. That's one way. That's quite expensive. As you can imagine, a lot of people are spending money to access those kind of customers online. Now, the second way is what we recommend, which is get people to like, know, and trust you first in the audience stage, then send these people adverts and ask them to do something. Now, these people will be way more responsive. And because the fact they'll be way more responsive and it's a focused audience, the cost of advertising to them becomes cheaper. Mm -hmm. So two different pathways, um, you know which one we are suggesting you use uh, by now. So <laughs> pathway number two. So that's where we are and that's the cost benefit to you and your business. So if you're a business owner thinking, oh man, my cost, my advertising is so freaking expensive. Well, maybe you're missing this. And don't worry, most business owners are because it, it, it can get technical. There's a whole bunch of stages to 
to handle within it. But hopefully this should now introduce the principle and insight to do that. Now, knowing these two pathways, knowing we're going to take this pathway here, trying to get myself a video correct, the pathway of getting something to like, know and trust you first, audience, then the tribe, and knowing that the focus at the moment is to get people in your tribe, we then can ask the question, how do we use all of this that me and Carl have been sharing with you and actually get people into your tribe in a real practical sense? So Carl, what's the thinking here now? Now we we summed up, they know the power of what we're speaking about. They know the principle, they know which path to take. How do we get people using this mechanism into our tribe? Sure. So we've alluded to this already, but the basic idea is we're going to do a direct address. We're going to talk directly to these people because they already know what we're about. They've already watched our content. We're not just some random stranger saying, hey, join my Facebook group. They, they've already watched us do yoga or they've already watched us talking about barefoot running or they've watched the BBO show and they've seen us talking about uh, about online business. They know what it is we're about and therefore we can go to them directly with this um, because they're in our custom audience and we can go to them directly and say, hey, come and join my group. This is why you want to do that. Mm. And the way we will do that is the most effective way, shall we say, is remember these people are used to watching our video. So the most effective way in the way we will do that is we will create a very short come join the tribe video. So it can be uh, a, a summoning to the tribe video. It can be a come join the tribe video, however you want to describe it. So it makes sense to you, but essentially it's a direct address and it's a video and it's saying come and join the tribe. Now this needs to be t two things. It needs to be short and there needs to be a structure to it. Now short Kyle, what's what you're thinking time wise to get somebody to watch it and pay attention. I mean, under a minute, if you can get it, um, under two minutes is fine. You, you do not, want or need to be talking about for 20 minutes about why people should join your group um, yeah and then it becomes too complicated if, if they haven't joined after two minutes they're not going to join let's be honest yeah it shouldn't take you 20 minutes to be like hey come to facebook and join my free group this free group where it's gonna get lots of value there's already stuff in place for you like yeah, yeah. yeah. there's free ice cream just join please come on guys <laughs> like if it comes desperate just they, they already know who you are they've watched your videos you are just jumping in saying hey um, I've got this group, I think it'd be really useful for you because of the certain problems that you are dealing with or the certain uh, things that you need. Um, so you should come and join us. It needs to be extremely simple, but let's give people a structure. Yeah, so number one is time. That's one to two minutes. Now the structure is a second phase of this. Mm. Now, if you've got a pen and paper, this is where we suggest you get a pen and paper because you're going to have to flesh this out for yourself. And again, remember, it's like a one minute script and this is very much a script. Spoken in your own way, with your own personal quirks, based on your own business niche. All of that's handled, we know that. If you've been following along the BBO show, we have covered this kind of, the content for different components within the structure again and again and again. So hopefully when we say certain things, you're gonna be like, yep, perfect, I know how to do that now. So let's dive into those. Um, I'm gonna to talk to them about the subject and just a very brief description and maybe me and Carl can work out an example for you as well. So number one, is the problem statement. We've been talking about this since the business week. So problem statement, that's ex that's exactly why they're connected to you anyway. Remember that, it's a problem statement. That's easy. So good. Uh, introduction to you. So that's the next component. This introduction must not be a 15 minute bio. This is, th remember, we're assuming that they already know who you are. So it's just a quick, very brief int introduction to you essentially linking it to the problem statement, why you are the person to they should listen to regarding the problem statement. Then the next is let them know about the free group. Amazing. Let them know about the free group. In, in this um, element, let them know about the free group. Let them also know why the group is valuable. So think about it like when, I, when we say let them know about the free group, as part of that is why is this group valuable uh, to you? Again, link it back to the problem statement. And then finally, a call to action. The call to action is really simple. In this case, it's come and join this free, super, super, super valuable Facebook group. And I look forward to conversating or connecting with you in that group. Really simple call to action. So they're the components. 
problem statement, introduction to you, free group, why, why they should join it, and a call to action. That's your one maximum two-minute video. Yeah, and there's a couple of sentences per point. It's super simple here. Hmm. Should are, we... you, are you going to give a stab at example? Or yeah, should what, I... Uh, I can do one. What do you want me to do it for? I can do it for Let, the BBO show. Let's do the BBO show, and then I will give another one of barefoot running, because that's what we've been talking about this week, barefoot shoes. Okay. Um, so I'd probably start, so problem statement would be using a hook, like, hey, starting an online business is difficult, um, and I understand the struggle that you're going through. Something like that, nice and simple. Introduction to me would be, um, I've started more than 10 online businesses, um, some successes, but mainly massive failures, and I would love to help you um, to avoid some of the failures I had. So it's an introduction relating it to the problem statement, which is the difficulty of starting online businesses. I have set a free group now. So I have set up a totally free uh, Facebook group for people like you and um, to discuss how we start up online businesses. Um, there's a lot of people at different stages of development there, all exchanging advice and helping each other out. It's a totally no zero promotion zone, um, a nice safe space for you to help grow and nurture your online business, stuff like that. And then call to action would be, um, again, it's a free group. So you just have to click the link below, um, answer a couple of questions and we'll let you in as soon as we have vetted your application. Awesome. So that's an example of the BBO show. And that's, that's uh, and Carl, you're, you're going to have to re-listen to that again because Carl's dropped some really useful tips and tools in there um we take it for granted now because we've we've taught this we do this we produce these videos so there's some really cool tools just extract it use some of those mm. now if i was to do one on barefoot running that's the case study every week we got a weird example that we use anything from chicken coops to yoga with adrian to yeah. Oh, yeah, barefoot backyard, running. Chickens. <laughs> backyard chickens that's so far my favorite so <laughs> barefoot running okay let's think about the problem statement um most people are getting um, pain after running because they're wearing the wrong shoes. Problem statement uh, as part of that solution is, and I'll be sharing with you the best kind of shoes to use and the best running techniques to eradicate this pain. Okay, that's the problem statement, probably a bit too wordy. Um, why I'm suited to share this information with you is I've been running for a long time in the wrong shoes and suffered through this pain. I thought that was the way to run. Soon as I switched shoes from a beginner level, I then worked my way back up to advanced wearing these incredible barefoot shoes. So that's a bit about me, why I can talk to you about this subject. And the best place I want to introduce you to this concept and get you started with some incredible beginner video videos. I've got five really short be beginner videos to get you starting to run in your first ever barefoot shoes, plus some examples of some cost effective barefoot shoes. So you can give it a try before you go invest in some expensive one. All of that information is available in a free group. It's a free Facebook group. You just got to answer some questions. So we get the right people in and leave the naughty people out that we don't want. You know, the people who think barefoot shoes are really bad for you. We want them to be left out. So if, you, if barefoot shoes are for you, and I'm assuming they are, come and join the barefoot running Facebook group. Now, like that's the kind of call to action. So that's, so I didn't talk about the components. That's just a running example. Carl broke it down by components. That's a running example. Now we've got that video formed. Remember, just film it on your phone, whatever. Don't go crazy with this. Don't, it's a one, don't, don't overcomplicate this. <laughs> it's a one minute video. Just yeah. get your partner, shoot it in the mirror, whatever. It doesn't matter. You just need selfie camera, whatever it is. You just need the video, one minute. Now, once we have this video, Carl, what do we do with it? So we're going to post it like we would any other audience video, and then we're going to boost it. Um, we talked about boosting. It's a kind of a limited form of advertising on Facebook uh, on Facebook through our page. We talked about that before in the audience section. Again, um, Facebook have a really good guide, a step-by-step, -step, like do this and this and this. So we're not going to go through it in detail. Did we add that in the... Yes. So how to boost your video, boosting yep. your video, look for that in the link in the description below. That will explain to you how to boost it. And when Carl says it's a limited form of advertising, another way to think of that is without having advertising on Facebook is really advanced. Um, there's so many components and tools to it, but boosting allows you access to advertising tools, which is really simple. 
Yeah, sorry, I mean limited in a good way. This is yes, in a good way. Uh, so that's what we mean limited. It's accessible to business owners who are like, what the hell is all these Facebook advertising tools? Because they can be quite complex in advance. Yep. Um, so there is a uh, guide that we've posted that will show you how to boost a post. Specifically, though, we're going to boost this post so that it is seen by our custom audience. We're not trying to get this out wide to the whole world or to everybody who's interested in barefoot running. We're not doing that kind of uh, promotion. We're doing it specifically to the custom audience, to the people who have already watched our videos about barefoot running or they've already watched our videos about online business. Those people only are gonna receive this particular message. This is gonna make it a lot cheaper um, and we're going to get a far higher conversion rate, a far higher percentage of people clicking and moving through to the next stage. Yeah, and remember, this is done after the audience stage. We are in the tribe stage now. So it's always worth emphasizing this because often when we work with clients, when they produce this video, they are talking to their audience as if the audience doesn't know them, like them and trust them. That's the wrong approach. Yep. You must take, You must produce this video and boost it with the assumption that the audience already likes, knows, and trusts you. And How you, do you know this? Because they're in your custom audience. And you can reference that in your intro, actually. You can say, hey, you've been watching my videos. Um, you've, you've seen my videos on online business, and hopefully you like what you see. Um, I have a lot more of this kind of content available in the group for mm. people who want to get a bit deeper. So you can reference the fact that they have been watching your videos because you know that. Otherwise, they would not be seeing this video. I mean, don't be creepy about it. Don't be like, hey, I'm following you. You uh, watch 10 <laughs> seconds of my video. Now yeah. you're going to be sent another video. Yeah. <laughs> you watch 47 seconds. That's the magic number. And now yeah. you must come to my group. And Carl and Harm said that you are currently in here and I want you to be here on my website buying something. Yeah, I have you in my <laughs> custom audience and in my bucket. And now you, will, I, I will progress you to the next stage. <laughs> <laughs> no, just say, look, you've watched my videos. You've yeah, seen which content. is honest. Yeah, you've seen what I'm about. You've seen, uh, hopefully, you, you dig the content we're putting out. Um, if you do, I've put together a group of like-minded people who are going through um, a similar journey as you are, and we'd like to invite you in and um, have you as part of our community. Just nice and simple. Yeah, and you, 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 you know, you could add a little bit which says, you know, you, but you've really annoyed me because... I know that you don't, you only watch 50% of my videos. You never watch them to the end. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, don't have Jonathan, to you, Jonathan. <laughs> you, how dare you only watch, you know how hard it is to produce live videos? Hans and Carl made me produce live videos. Now I'm producing them. You only watch 50%. Are you kidding me? Like you don't have to do that, but um, have fun with it. That's the key. We're, we're, we're having a bit of a joke because you can have fun with it. So we have covered an incredible tool, which is remarketing. Not only did we cover remarketing, we've now are starting to close the loop on what the work we got you to do many, many moons ago now on the BBO show in the audience section. So all of this work in the audience section should now start to come to fruition when you invite people in to your Facebook group, your community, your tribe. And remember this, if, if you've done your content on Facebook, you could be sending them to anywhere. Facebook's efficient because they're used to that that's the platform they're on but really you could be sending them anywhere your website your slack channel your facebook group whatever but for the ease of this and the one pathway that we're sharing with you for now the facebook group is the place to send them so let me just summarize what we've been talking about today fundamentally we're moving people from our audience that work should be done remember we're assuming two things one two you're doing on facebook number one is you've been producing these great content valuable pieces of information now, we want to move people from the audience to the tribe. Will that be the entire audience? Absolutely no, but it'll be a small percentage of the audience move over to your tribe, which is a big win. So that's the first principle. How do we do that? Well, we do that via remarketing and specifically remarketing to your custom audience. Because remember, they haven't come to your website here. They've been watching your videos. But to understand this, we had to explain this first part. So now you've got that nailed. In order to do that, if, if you're ready to do that step by step, the links for Facebook's help guide are in the steps one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, are in the link in the description below. If you are really stuck, if you are like, what the hell are you talking about? Come and join us in the Slack group. And me and Carl can give you some pointers. If there's a particular step you're struggling with, you know, we've produced videos on all sorts of stuff. So we can just dig out a video and say, look, this is how you boost it. Just watch this video. Or we can give you some direct advice. 
So that's also what we've covered. Now, finally, to actually activate this system, this super cool system, you're going to produce a come join the tribe video, boost it to that custom audience. Again, how to do that is in the link in the description below, but at least you know the principle of it now. And that should get a regular flow of people moving from your audience into your tribe. Where's your tribe? A exclusive private access only questionnaire entry Facebook group. That's what we've set up. So hopefully this has been mind blowing. Hopefully you now know why anything you look at online will chase you around the internet for a very long time, maybe three weeks, but in the real terms, that is a long time. So now you know why, and you're now equipped with thinking about Facebook, certainly by now as a business rather than a consumer, knowing that we're gonna have to pay for some of this, but we're bringing the advertising costs down because we're being way more effective with it. We're only talking to people that like, no one trust us. So cool, that's it. I'm gonna pause there for a second. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the next assumption, which is people are now in your tribe. How do we manage them? How do we look after them? How do we nurture them? How do we continue to grow them so that at some point in the future, we can make a sale? We can move them for, to an offer. We can present them with our product. That's the key. So that will be covering tomorrow. So that's it from us. Remember, we've got a Slack group. That's number one. Number two is subscribe, click the notification button on whatever channel you're watching, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. If you prefer to watch it via web player or you like to read the show notes or a full transcript, or there's something where you're like, oh, I just need to go back and check that up. Guess what? You don't have to watch the video. We've got some show notes and they are at bbo.show. You just type that in anywhere, bbo.show and the show notes webpage shall appear. That's it. That's it from me and Carl. We shall see you tomorrow.